for a long time, manual therapy has been advocated to treat upper cervical spine problems. Patients with cervicogenic dizziness may benefit from manual therapy of the upper cervical spine as the complaints of dizziness are thought to be located there. A dysfunction of the proprioceptive input from the higher cervical spine due to muscle fatigue, inflammation, degenerative changes, or a trauma, such as a whiplash-associated disorder, for example, lie at the root of the symptoms. Manual therapy techniques, such as mobilizations and manipulations to promote joint mobility, reduce muscle spasms, and to increase cervical efferent proprioceptive input, have been frequently studied. But until now, it remains unclear whether these effects are maintained compared to other treatment approaches, such as exercise or vestibular rehabilitation. To get to know that, we'll take a dive in this systematic review from the Vestal and colleagues of the year 2022. For clarification, this review reported the conclusion into evidence coming from RCTs specifying the cause of cervicogenic dizziness and into evidence coming from RCTs not exactly specifying the cause. There were only three reviews specifying the cause of the dizziness complaints. In all cases, the onset of the dizziness was preceded by a whiplash event. Here, the results were of low and very low quality only, meaning that there is only limited to little confidence in the estimates. The estimates, despite the low to very low evidence, however, found that exercise therapy was able to cause a small reduction on the VAS and on the impact of the dizziness complaints on quality of life, up to one year. Exercise was able to reduce neck disability and to improve head repositioning accuracy up to one year. On the other hand, on a very low quality evidence basis, no effect of exercise on static or dynamic balance was seen. Many studies did not specify the exact cause of the dizziness complaints and were grouped together. Analyzing them, a moderate level of evidence showed that manual therapy had a positive effect on reducing the intensity of the cervicogenic dizziness measured on the VAS with a clinically relevant difference. Also, the impact of the dizziness on quality of life was less, yet here the difference did not exceed the minimal important change. Moderate quality of evidence also reveals clinically important differences in increases in cervical range of motion into flexion extension and in improvements in pain intensity. A moderate level of evidence showed manual therapy was able to improve static and dynamic balance up to one year. Very low quality evidence reveals an improvement in cervical spine pain, head repositioning accuracy and sagittal alignment following manual therapy. And manual therapy plus exercise, shown by very low evidence, may also reduce cervicogenic dizziness. Now, in practical terms, what did the manual therapy showing moderate effectiveness in reducing the intensity of the cervicogenic dizziness consist of? The study of Carrasco Uribaran 2021 made use of pre-manipulative techniques and suboccipital muscle massage, followed by a traction manipulation at the C0, C1, C1, C2 and C2, C3 levels, and ended with placing the patient's head in a relaxed spine position. Reed and colleagues used spinal natural epiphyseal glides, abbreviated as SNAGs, in the direction of those movements predominantly causing the dizziness. At the end range, the position was held for up to 10 seconds. In the later study, they used therapist and self-administered snacks using the fingertips or straps in the dizziness-causing movements. And here, also the end range positions were held for up to 10 seconds. Finally, the study by Reed in 2015, beside the snacks and self-snacks, also included range of motion exercises into flexion, extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. Summing up, this review showed several beneficial effects of manual therapy on reducing cervicogenic dizziness and associated complaints. The evidence base for exercise was only low to very low, which could mean that not many studies regarding exercise therapy for cervicogenic dizziness were included, or that studies for these symptoms to date have mostly relied on manual therapy. The manual therapy procedures studied here were based on true high-velocity thrust manipulations, mobilizations in the form of snacks, and range of motion exercises. Alright, 
I hope you learned something by watching this video today and hope to see you again in another video soon. Check out our website for a ton of relevant research content or enroll in one of our courses. As always, this was Ellen for PhysioTutors. Bye.